Hello, my name's Vince Sheehan. Today I'd like to talk about Mendelssohn's Third Symphony in A minor, the Scottish Symphony. And I'd like to go through each of the four movements, exploring how the music's put together, because I do believe that having some understanding of um, structure in classical music can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment of it. Now Mendelssohn in 1829, a young man, 20 years old, uh, he decided to go to Scotland um, with his uh, friend, Carl Klingemann. And um, it was on this holiday uh, that Mendelssohn uh, was inspired to write some of his greatest music. You might, of course, know the Hebrides Overture, well, that was, um, that was written um, from this uh, holiday. But even before that, um, Mendelssohn visited Edinburgh and he went to Holyrood Palace and um, he wrote home these words. In the mists of twilight today, we went to the palace where Queen Mary lived and loved. There is a small room to be seen there with a spiral staircase by the door. The chapel next to it has now lost its roof. It is full of grass and ivy and it is at that broken down altar that Mary was crowned Queen of Scots. Everything there is crumbling and decaying. The roof is open to the sky. I think today I may have found the beginnings of my Scottish symphony there. And then from that um, trip to the palace, um, he was inspired to write this melody, which goes like this. haunting, uh, beautiful melody, obviously inspired by those decaying ruins of Holyrood Palace. Now, it wasn't until 1842, some 13 years later, that Mendelssohn actually finished this symphony. It was kind of in the back of his mind all that time, and he kept saying, you know, to his, uh, his friends and associates, look, you know, I must get this Scottish symphony written but it wasn't completed uh, until 1842, and um, it was premiered that year uh, in Leipzig. Now the symphony begins um, with that melody I just played, that makes up the introduction. And um, there's no violins at the beginning actually, it's the, the violas um, are the highest register um, uh, instrument in the strings. And that gives it this kind of muted, veiled, uh, rather sombre sound opening to this um, symphony. Uh, then the violins come in with this idea in the introduction. First and seconds together, a very strong sound. The introduction carries on and then eventually we come to the first subject. All of the movements in the symphony are in sonata form um, and the first subject uh, in A minor goes like this in 6-8. Then we have a transition uh, with this kind of rhythm. Dum, da -lum, da -lum, da -lum, da -lum. Gets fortissimo, very uh, dramatic moment in this movement. And then we get to the second um, subject, which is in E minor. 
We're in the dominant uh, minor key here. And uh, we hear this idea in the clarinet. And so on. Underneath that, actually, Mendelssohn keeps the first subject uh, motif, this idea. That carries on underneath the, uh, the second subject melody as a kind of counter um, subject. Then we get to the codetta, one of, the, I think, the most uh, loveliest moments in this symphony. Such a beautiful melody. It's kind of this wistful, kind of elegant um, uh, feel to this music, like this. I really love that every time it comes back. Um, the development is, um, it begins with this, this rather profound sounding um, shift downward in, um, in key uh, by semitones. It's a very beautiful uh, moment. We're back to this kind of hushed, um, sombre atmosphere which uh, Mendelssohn conjured up in the introduction. Um, it's a very beautiful moment, the entry of the, the beginning of the development. Um, perhaps a little bit like the opening of the development in um, the um, Schubert's Unfinished Symphony in the first uh, movement. It's that kind of feel that it was going into new territory in a very beautiful way. The development's um, based on uh, everything we've heard so far. The first subject, uh, the second subject and even the codetta makes an appearance in the development. And then we have the recapitulation, which is normal, as you'd expect, but no transition. And then we have the coda. And the coda is like a, um, an interesting uh, part of this symphony because we have the, uh, this stormy music. It's, the, it's kind of like a, a precursor to the Hebrides overture. Um, which, so we have this kind of, you know... Um, kind of idea, rising and the swelling and falling of the waves. Um, and interestingly, between the strings and the winds, we have this, uh, this kind of contrary uh, motion dynamics, if you like. You know, the wind, when the winds are fortissimo, uh, the strings are pianissimo, and then they kind of uh, glide in and out of each other. It's a very uh, uh, interesting orchestral effect um, used by other composers, of course. Uh, then we have a brief return to the music of the introduction. And that's the end of the first movement. Without a pause, we go straight into the second movement. Mendelssohn um, wanted um, each movement to just run uh, from the previous one. The second one's completely different. It's joyous, light, uh, even fun music. Um, we have this uh, idea, again in sonata form, this is the first subject. Note that, that rhythm, the Scotch snap, dum dum, um, perhaps, um, you know, something uh, directly from the uh, folk music of Scotland finds its way in that, with that Scotch snap in that subject. And we have this uh, dotted idea, da, da, da in the codetta. Uh, the development, well it develops the first and second subjects and the recapitulation is interesting because the first subject starts on the flute in the wrong key and then it settles down um, eventually. There's no transition, we're into the codetta and then um, these are kind of one of these feathery like codas, um, that kind of texture that Mendelssohn specialised in. The third movement's rather tragic in tone, it perhaps 
harkens back to the atmosphere conjured up in the introduction to the first movement. Um, again, it's in sonata form like the other movements. We, we start with this uh, introduction, um, which introduces this dotted idea, which will form the bulk of the transitions uh, in this movement. It sounds almost like we, we've, we've joined the introduction halfway through. Um, it's a rather um, unusual effect. And then the first subject comes in with this melody. beautiful um, first subject. Then we have uh, the transition which um, rather tragic uh, based on that introductory dotted rhythm uh, we find into the introduction of this movement. It also reminds me slightly of um, the second movement of Beethoven's seventh symphony. We have this dum dum da dum dum da 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 the, the, that's that kind of feel to it. Um. It's actually the transitions in this movement which um, bear the, the weight, the emotional weight of this movement. They, 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 there's some quite um, uh, spectacular and uh, extremely beautiful climaxes in those transition uh, passages of this movement. We eventually move to the second subject. This movement's in A major, we move to uh, the dominant E major, and we have this idea. It goes like this. have a, um, a development, a short development based on the transition in this movement we have a recapitulation which is normal and then a coda. The fourth movement um, is rather, uh, it's an art form again straight on from the third movement like the other movements and we have this rather swashbuckling idea. And then um, with that, there's another idea in this first subject group, it goes like this. And so on. We have a transition, um, which takes us to the second subject, which goes like this. Codetta based on the first subject. We have a development with this rather wonderful fugal section uh, based on the uh, first subject. We have um, a recapitulation uh, with an extended codetta and then Mendelssohn throws us a surprise right at the end of the symphony. We have um, this uh, glorious A major ending. Um, you know we've been A minor all the way through basically, and then all of a sudden at the end we have this 
uh, inbreaking of the, these, these rays of sun in A major. And it's a completely new theme Mendelssohn has uh, saved right to the end of this symphony. And uh, it's like this, played on the violas again, right like the very beginning of the, um, the symphony. Go yeah, like this. to this uh, rather grand and uh, glorious uh, climax. And that ends Mendelssohn's third symphony, the Scottish Symphony. I hope you've enjoyed this video about this work. Um, if you follow with the score, please check out the uh, bar numbers and the, the, uh, the structure in a bit more detail in the description below. And if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you've got any uh, suggestions for any other videos, please let me know. And I'd like to thank Tidnid, who um, suggested uh, that I analyse this symphony. So all the best, keep safe and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.